if you take a look at just in general looking at the boat, you notice it's very different than the boats that we're normally using with the Fairwind. What's one of the main huge differences? It's, it's a catamaran. catamaran. Two holes. Yeah, it's a catamaran, right? So that, that complicates <laughs> things. <laughs> makes it more difficult to steer. It's bigger. It can only be on an end cap. Uh, so it's more exposed to marine traffic, people bumping into it. So it's important for us when we're approaching the boat that we take a general to see that there's nothing out of place that can pose a safety threat to you or your crew or other property or its own self, right? So <clears throat> when we walk here, we notice that the screecher was slack, which means either the halyard was loosened or there's something going on with the bowsprit. But generally, you want to make sure that the boat on a overall doesn't look out of place. If you have two pontoons, you have the trampoline, the catwalk, the bridge, the... <clears throat> there's no dolphin striker, but there's like that we call the seagull striker. All those components, the diamond formation of the shrouds. It's familiarity is what we really are learning. You know, like there's a lot of different systems. Um, like the head, you know, is very simple, but different. And when we go through the boat, we're all gonna be learning together. The more I'm on it, the more I'm getting familiar with it. And that's really why the, 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 the learning curve is gonna be steep because it's a film, familiarity issue. There's just a lot of different things that we've never had in the club. But the, the boats, once you start to get familiar with it, it's very, very user friendly in my opinion. So the first thing we're gonna do is open the boat and the containment covers will go underneath the port helm in a little storage area. Where do we keep the locks? Um, put them on the handles of the Companionway sliders. So the first thing that Art likes us to do is start here at the starboard helm, which is like sort of the main helm of the dual helm. And the great new feature that's new to Fairwind Boats also is the power, power winch. And as you know, with great power comes great responsibility. It makes it very easy to haul up the main but it's powerful and you have to, you know, you don't want to torque anything. You want to keep an eye on the battens. If they get caught, back off, you know, make sure the battens are feeding through the lazy jacks, you know, well, because it can overpower things and cause some problems. Here are the lines. They're labeled, uh, not necessarily accurately. The outhaul main, the main halyard, which doesn't have a lot of run. The spinnaker halyard, which is actually the screecher halyard. We can follow those lines up later, but they run into this power winch, which is great. The power winch has two settings. It has the winch setting, which is fast, and the trim for slight adjustments, right? <clears throat> These things have covers on them so you don't accidentally put them on because we will learn that it is a very dangerous thing with a winch handle in it. So if you hand me the winch handle, I'll show you. The winch itself has a lock and open mechanism. You just put it in like normal, but in order to disengage the, the motor, there's a pin in the center of the, the keyhole. It puts the pin in. You cannot winch unless you actually depress the pin and then you can winch. It disengages the motor, the engine, or the, the motor, electric motor. Right, so now I can winch, right? The problem is that once this is engaged and locks in place, it can spin like that. It can pop out, it can hit somebody. You don't want to ever use the power with the winch handle in here. And you don't really need this unless the power fails or you're going to do it manually. Now, We've chartered Eventide, which is a sister ship. It's across the way in Marina Sailing. They do not have a power winch, and we, we have hauled up that sail manually. Okay, so it can be done here. It's the same boat. But it takes a lot of effort, and you can have someone jump the halyard and help you. But So I just want to tell you there's, there's two systems here, but I, I think what we're going to do is recommend only using this if there's a power problem or you know there's a short or something. If you have somebody here, you got to really watch. Ooh, see that? Yeah. Break your arm? Yeah, break your arm. It, so this is why you have to respect this. It's very powerful. We actually blew out a fuse. It's actually called a relay or a breaker. And then we lost the engines and the power winch uh, 
because there's too much draw on this thing. So, so if uh, the lines jam and you're winching on, you can cause a lot of problems. One, this thing doesn't know when there's resistance. So you have to be very vigilant because you can be stripping something, tightening something, or you're putting too much strain on the motor and causing a breaker to trip, which is becomes a safety issue if you need to be trimming. Um, well, like the halyard was attached to the loop up there and someone who was winching on the halyard and it wasn't going up, so they went full on and it was just, it was a, it was anchored to one of the, the, one of the shrouds and it just, did it rip off or did it break? Yeah, it, it pulled off. Or did it, it break her? It hasn't been replaced yet. So that's, a, that's what some of the things with the powered winch is that also like if there's like a kink or if a, like a wrap and you're powering through, it's gonna be a lot of work. Other than that, you know, like, well, you know, when you see it work, it's actually pretty easy. The last four feet to the top, um, it starts to go real slow. So it's important to have the engine on idle or slightly fast idle at the end. The, the, the electrical system is tied in from the engines through the battery to the winch to add additional electrical power to the winch so it can pull it up. So if you have it at a slow idle, we blew the breaker because there's too much draw on it, and then we couldn't figure out how to start the engine because we didn't know where the breaker was. 